On this video we're going to make the ship follow the mouse on the x-axis by code. So already on the bird scene, in order for a script to run, it must be attached to a node. So by right clicking on the ship node, I'm going to add a script. We can see that this script is going to inherit from area 2 d which is the type of the node it'll be attached to. The language will be GDScript, and for its path, I'm actually going to save it in the scripts folder as ship.gz. Enable a built-in script will allow us to save the script within the sim file. I'll leave it off since we want the script to be on a different file. Hit create and that will take us to the script editor. This panel at the left shows us all the files we have open. I only use it when I want to jump to another script, so I'll hide it. You can see that Godot has written some code to help us get started. I'm gonna delete them since we'll look to pretty much every aspect of coding in Godot throughout the course. I like to have a comment at the top with the name of the script, which is just a thing that I do. So we have here a function name ready, which is a callback function that gets called by the engine when this node is ready, meaning when this node itself and its children have been created. This only gets called once at the beginning, when the scene is being created. So in here is where we will initialize some variables and do some changes to this node once it's created. We have this pass keyword that does nothing but since in GDScript, a spacing is what defines a block of codes. It becomes quite handy now and then. For instance, this function is expecting a block of code after colon. But we want to do nothing on this function, so we fill the gap with the pass keyword. Something quite important to notice is this on the score here. Godot for convention starts the name of some functions with an underscore as a hint of a callback function. And callbacks are functions that we usually won't be calling ourselves, but the engine will. If I want to create a function and I start with an underscore, the autocompletion shows all the built in callbacks. One rule important is the process callback, which gets called every frame. On other engines, its name, update, or step. But something that doesn't change is the parameter delta which contains the time since this function was previously called. Now, since we want the ship to be constantly be chasing the mouse, and this function gets called all the time, here is where we will place the code for tracking the mouse. So the most straightforward way to do it is by setting the ship's x position equals to the mouse x position. And to do so, I'm going to create a variable name, pause, equal to the ship's position, which we can get with the function getPost. Since this function is returning a vector, I can access to the x value by saying post.x, which we want it to be the mouse x position. So I'll set it equal to get global mouse post.x. And finally, we're going to set the ship's position to the post variable. And this should do it. But before we try it out, we actually have to enable the process callback, otherwise it won't get called. So in ready, I'll call the function set process and pass through as argument. Let's give it a shot. And we can see that the chip follows the mouse. But there is actually a little problem here. Since we are setting the chip's position equal to the mouse position, if I move the cursor upside the window and then I get it back, the ship will suddenly appear at the mouse position. And this is to get even worse on a phone, since we can just stop touching the screen and then tap on another place and the ship will be there. So we have to make the ship follow the mouse smoothly. So this is what we are doing right now. We are making the ship's horizontal position the same as the mouse's, which allow us to move the ship around, but when the position suddenly changes, the ship does it as well. Another way to accomplish the same thing is by calculating the distance between the mouse and the ship, and then add that value to the ship's position. And I am calling it motion instead of distance, because the distance is supposed to always be positive. 
but in this case we do need a negative value so the ship can move to the left. If we apply this on the ship, we get the same outcome as before. Now, one interesting thing we can do is set the amount the ship will move to half the distance, which we can do by multiplying it by 0.5, which can also be seen as 50% of the distance, and this will give us a quite interesting result. Since the ship will always move from its current position to another, before it would have moved from the start to the end in one simple frame, but now it will be half the way, and the next frame it will be half the way again, and the same for the other frames, getting closer and closer. And you can see that this gives us a smooth movement, because the ship will look like it's going really fast, but as it gets closer, it seems like it's slowing down. If we apply this in the game, the ship looks like it decelerates as it gets closer to its target. Now, if we suddenly change the target, it still does it, but I find them to be way too fast. So let's take what we did before, but instead of moving 50% of the way, we will move it 20%. So on the first frame, the ship will be 20% closer. On the next one, 20% closer from its last position and the same for the other frames. It will be of course slower but smoother. And it gets slower as it gets closer just like before, but this time it starts slow too. If we take this to the game, we have a nice motion as the ship follows the mouse. And if we suddenly change the target's position, we have a way better motion than before with 50%. So back to the editor, instead of doing all this, we will create a variable named motion equals to the global mouse position that x minus the current position that x, and we will multiply this by 0 0.2. And to apply the new position, I'm going to use the function translate, which unlike set position, will add the given position to the current one instead of overwriting it or it can also be seen as doing a relative move. So as argument, we're going to pass a vector 2 with motion as x and 0 as y. So it just stays put in the y-axis. Let's give it a shot. And there we have it. Now you can see that the chip gets a little bit off from the view, so we'll have to address that as well. And we can keep the ship on the view quite easily by using the function clap, which will make sure that a certain value doesn't go below or above a range we indicate, which in this case the range will be from 0 to the width of the view. So I'll add a comment here saying clap into view. And I'm going to declare a variable name view size equals to get viewport rect that size, which gives us the view size. I will declare another variable name pos equals to the current position. And down below we are going to overwrite x and set it equals to clamp. And here we will pass pos that x because that's the value we want to clamp. As the minimum value we will use 0 meaning the left edge of the view plus 16 which is half of the chip's width. As the maximum value we are going to pass view size that width minus 16. And finally, we are going to apply the new position. Let's give it a shot. And there we have it. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you have fun writing your first script for this game. Thanks so much to all my patrons, I really appreciate the support. A big shout out to Hardbeast, who provided the access for this game. And until next time, see you later.